Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about aggregate supply, both the short run and the long run. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is the short run aggregate supply curve. That short run aggregate supply curve is the supply of all goods and services within the entire economy. Remember back in unit one, you learned about supply curves for individual goods. Now we're talking about the supply of all goods and services within the entire economy. When we graph out the short run aggregate supply curve, we're not going to have price on that Y axis. Instead, we're going to have the price level measured by the CPI or the GDP deflator. On that x-axis, instead of quantity, we're going to have real GDP. Real GDP is also called real income, real output, national income, and it correlates to employment. Higher levels of GDP means more people have jobs, and lower levels of GDP means fewer people have jobs, and we have more unemployment as a result. And when we graph out the short run aggregate supply curve, it's going to be upward sloping, showing a direct relationship between the price level and the quantity of real GDP we get. And the reason why the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping is because wages and other resource prices are sticky in the short run. And since wages and other resource prices are sticky, that means higher price levels come with more profit for individual businesses. And so those higher price levels incentivize more production. And that's why we get higher levels of real GDP at higher price levels on that short run aggregate supply curve. And when we get lower price levels, real GDP output is going to fall because wages and other resource prices stay high in the short run, and that means lower profit for businesses, causing them to produce lower levels of real GDP output. And as a result of that upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, we get a short run trade-off between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. As we just saw, when prices rise, real GDP output increases, and that means lower levels of unemployment. And when price levels fall, that means lower inflation, and it means lower amounts of real GDP output, and that means more unemployment. So next we're going to talk about short run aggregate demand shifters, also called supply shocks. Now, if we have a change in the price level, that's going to cause movement up or down that short run aggregate supply curve. But if short run aggregate supply changes, that means the curve has shifted and we get a new quantity of real GDP output at every price level. A positive supply shock means we have an increase in supply, and that's going to mean a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. A negative or adverse supply shock means that we have a decrease in short run aggregate supply, and that's going to be a shift to the left. Let's talk about what those things are that cause a right or left shift of that short run aggregate supply curve. The first cause of a supply shock to the economy is resource prices, mostly wages. If we see a decrease in the wages or other resource prices, we are going to see a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, which means we've had an increase in short run aggregate supply. And if wages and other resource prices increase, that's going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left because the increase in resource prices have increased production costs. Next, we have productivity. And the main factor you're going to see that impacts productivity is a change in physical capital stock. The capital stock is the amount of physical capital within an economy. If we have an increase in the capital stock within the economy, that's going to increase the productivity of workers, and we will see a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve as a result. If there's a decrease in the capital stock, on the other hand, that's going to decrease productivity as there is less capital per worker, and that means lower output per worker hour. Third, we have inflation expectations. When the expectation of inflation changes moving forward, that is going to change resource prices and wages as a result. If there becomes an expectation of lower prices moving forward, businesses will expect lower profits and as a result, lower wages. And since workers are expecting lower prices as well, those workers will accept those lower wages. And that means lower production costs for businesses, shifting the short run aggregate supply curve to the right. If on the other hand, we have an increase in inflation expectations, then that means people are expecting higher prices. Workers will demand higher wages. Businesses will give their workers those higher wages. And those higher wages mean higher production costs, shifting that short run aggregate supply curve to the left. Fourth, we have business taxes. Now, if your AP economics exam is talking about changes in taxes generally, that's probably going to be an aggregate demand shifter because of changes in consumer income that result from changes in taxes. But if they specify changes in corporate taxes or business taxes, that's going to be a short run aggregate supply curve shifter. 
When business taxes decrease, that means lower production costs, and that shifts our short run aggregate supply curve to the right. But if business taxes were to increase on the other hand, that means higher production costs, shifting our short run aggregate supply curve to the left. Our fifth short run aggregate supply curve shifter is business regulations. If there's a reduction in business regulations, that's generally going to decrease production costs, shifting our short run aggregate supply curve to the right. If we have an increase in business regulations on the other hand, that's going to increase production costs, reducing our short run aggregate supply, shifting it to the left. Next, we're going to talk about the long run aggregate supply curve. The long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at the full employment level of output. On the graph, we got the price level on that Y axis and the real GDP on the X axis. And we have a vertical curve labeled LRAS with YF on the X axis below. Y stands for national income and the F means full employment. At low price levels, we are going to have the full employment level of output in the long run. And at high price levels, we are going to have the full employment level of output in the long run. And the reason why we have a long run aggregate supply curve that is vertical at the full employment level of output is because wages are flexible in the long run. Let's go back to the short run aggregate supply curve to see how flexible wages impact the long run. Let's say we currently have PLE as our price level and YE as our current real GDP output. If our price level were to rise, then we would also get an increase in real GDP output. In the short run, we will see no change in wages or other resource prices. But in the long run, when prices rise, wages and other resource prices will also rise. And when that occurs, the short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the left, raising the price level further, but decreasing the quantity of real output back to YE. If on the other hand, the price level had decreased from our original starting point, then the real GDP output would have also fallen in the short run because wages would have not changed and that would have meant lower profit potential for businesses, causing them to reduce output. But since we've seen a decrease in the price level, wages and other resource prices will eventually fall to that lower price level. And when it does, that means lower production costs, shifting our short run aggregate supply curve to the right, decreasing our price level further and bringing the real GDP output back to YE. And so in the long run, the real GDP output hasn't changed. Those three points are the long run aggregate supply curve. And for reasons we'll see in a future video, the quantity of real output below the long run aggregate supply curve is the quantity of output we get when the economy is at full employment. So we're not going to label it YE, but rather YF. And that's why the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at the full employment level of output, because wages are flexible in the long run. But the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping because wages and other resource prices are sticky or inflexible in the short run. Next, we're going to talk about the long run aggregate supply curve shifters. The long run aggregate supply curve is the long run potential real GDP output for an economy. So if we have a decrease in the quantity of resources, it will no longer be possible to produce as much output, shifting our long run aggregate supply curve to the left. If we see an increase in the quantity of resources, on the other hand, that's going to shift our long run aggregate supply curve to the right. Our second shifter is the quality of resources. Human capital is the skills and knowledge of the workforce. And if we see fewer workers being educated, that's going to reduce the skills and knowledge of the workforce, and that will shift our long run aggregate supply curve to the left. If on the other hand, we see increases in job trainings programs that will increase our human capital or skills and knowledge, shifting our long run aggregate supply curve to the right, because workers with more skills and knowledge can produce more output. Our third long run aggregate supply curve shifter is productivity. Again, we have changes in the physical capital stock that impact the productivity. If we see a decrease in the physical capital stock, that's going to decrease our ability to produce goods and services, shifting our long run aggregate supply curve to the left. If we see an increase in the physical capital stock, that will increase our long run aggregate supply curve, shifting it to the right. If we have changes in technology that increase the ability to produce, that's going to shift our long run aggregate supply curve to the right. And that increases our long run potential real GDP output. So in the end, the long run aggregate supply curve shifts because of any change that would also shift the production possibilities curve. That's because both the production possibilities curve and the long run aggregate supply curve show the long run potential real GDP output. If we are producing at a point on the production possibilities curve, that means we're producing the full employment level of real GDP output labeled YF here. And if we see an outward shift of that production possibilities curve, it means that the long run aggregate supply curve has shifted to the right 
because in both cases, we have an increase in the potential real GDP output. So make sure you remember the long run aggregate supply curve is the potential long run GDP output. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about the short run and long run aggregate supply curves. If you've already watched the aggregate demand video and you're ready to practice, head over to reviewecon.com and play the aggregate demand, aggregate supply shift versus movement along the curve game. And if you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.